Tonight, pro-Trump lawyer Sidney Powell and top cheerleader for the big lie, now dismissing her own claims of election fraud because, quote, no reasonable person would accept them as fact. OK, I'm not joking. I'm not dancing around this here. That is her official defense. It is all in writing now in an official court filing in connection with a one point three billion dollar lawsuit by Dominion Voting Systems, a company suing Powell for damages. Now, her lies weren't only limited to Dominion voting machines. She waded deep, deep into conspiracy world. What we are really dealing with here and uncovering more by the day is the massive influence of communist money through Venezuela, Cuba, and likely China in the interference with our elections here in the United States. The entire election, frankly, in all the swing states should be overturned and the legislatures should make sure that the electors are selected for Trump. Out front now, Michigan's Democratic Attorney General uh, Dana Nessel, she is seeking to disbar Powell from practicing law in Michigan after repeating lies about the state's election. Attorney General Nessel, I'm glad to talk to you again. Let me just start off with, with this defense that Powell is putting out there, that she is literally saying in an official filing that no reasonable person would have accepted what she repeatedly said as fact. Yep, that's her uh, defense. Um, and it's, you know, just basically speaking, you know, just kidding. Um, uh, all the things that I said to undermine the integrity of our electoral system, it was what we knew it to be, which was a lie. Uh, a lie so outrageous that she says now that no reasonable person could possibly believe it. But unfortunately, um, you know, who did believe it? 67% of all Republicans believed it. Uh, 366 people that have been charged with uh, insurrection for storming the Capitol, they believed it. Republican legislatures like my own uh, that have spent countless hours having hearings uh, on this issue, they believed it. And, and the, all these legislators now that are voting to enact voter suppression laws to protect against what we know to be the, the most fair, accurate, safest election in modern history. Um, the damage that this individual, this woman has done, and her cohorts who filed these cases along with her in the highest court of, in the land uh, is untold. And, and who knows how or when this damage can possibly be undone. Well, I mean, it's pretty incredible, too. She's saying no reasonable person would have accepted what she said as fact. She went and peddled that to the president, and, and he, well— he continues to peddle it. <laughs> he peddled it yesterday, right, saying the election was rigged and he won. And right, he's still putting out the things out there uh, that she now admits are something no reasonable person would have accepted as fact. I want to just play a little bit more in case anyone has forgotten, um, because she did talk a lot during all of this with a long list of spurious allegations that she pushed in service to Trump's big lie. Uh, take a listen. We've got evidence of corruption all across the country in countless districts. The machine ran an algorithm that shaved votes from Trump and awarded them to Biden. It's really the most massive and historical egregious fraud the world has ever seen. So at the time, Attorney General, she actually said she had evidence of, of these things. But now, right in this filing where she says no reasonable person would have ever listened to this, she... <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing because it's not funny, but she says, indeed, plaintiffs themselves characterize the statements at issue as wild accusations and outlandish claims. They are repeatedly labeled inherently improbable and even impossible. Such characterizations of the allegatory, allegedly defamatory statements further support defendants' position that reasonable people would not accept such statements as fact, but view them only as claims. I mean, this is this is pretty stunning. She's saying... <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead and respond to the, the desperation of this defense. Well, you know, uh, the last time you had me on your show, um, you talked about the accusations that were made by, uh, against myself and um, I, the governor of my state, Governor Whitmer, and um, Secretary of State Benson, when we filed a complaint with the Texas uh, Attorney uh, Grievance Commission, Attorney Grievance Commission, to try to disbar Sidney Powell. And the accusation that was levied against us is that we were abusing our authority and abusing our positions uh, of power in order to try to ensure that this woman could never again practice law anywhere in the United States of America. 
But I mean, to see that she, to talk about blaming the victim, here she, not only did she make no effort to determine whether the allegations she was making were factually accurate, she knew it was a lie. She knew it was a lie, and yet she, she entered it into all these court uh, pleadings anyway. She argued it to the United States Supreme Court. And, you know, it's, it's so egregious in so many ways, but it really, it undermines uh, the credibility of the justice system, and it undermines our system of elections. And um, the damage really is just untold. I hope that as many people will believe her now when she says that she is lying as as many people who believed her when she said that this was the truth. Hmm. Wow. It's strongly said. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Attorney General. Thanks for having me. And also